Hi guys, Robby46 here. Welcome yourselves back to Ride 4 on the Xbox Series X. Now today we're going to talk more in depth about the updated physics to Ride 4. Um, so we're just going to do a little time trial first and then we're going to get into a race. So uh, let's just go through the riding aids, which is literally nothing for me. So uh, realistic physics, manual gears, automatic brakes is off, joint brakes is off, ABS is off, off track help is off. Uh, manual tuck apparently auto tuck is still bugs uh, so bear that in mind manual tuck um, is fine ideal trajectory is off and rewind is off so we're going to go around magni core using the uh, ducati panigale v4 r the uh, racing modified version and uh, yeah it's basically this is a bike that i've used a lot so i'm gonna try and kind of explain more what the new physics have done. So, uh, yeah, we've done all that. Um, we'll just go for soft tyres for now. We're not going to bother with this, the uh, bike setup. We're just going to go straight out. So, yeah, we've had the new update. And it has simplified things. So, what I'm going to do is just change. So, traction control is off. Engine braking's on one. Anti-wheelie's on two. So, they have fixed anti-wheelie, which is fine. Um, right. So, let's just finish this and uh, start a lap. So, the braking is a little bit weird now. Um, it, it does feel a little bit weaker on the brakes. But that's not always necessarily a bad thing. It does seem that understeer is back a little bit more um the understeer is is still there and it looks like and um, feels like that there's more of it which is not a good thing in my opinion um that's one thing i didn't really like about ride three was the fact that the understeer kind of held the game back from being you know a really good game um especially at the beginning of the life they did try tweaking it a bit um, oh, nearly lost the rear. Um, so yeah, understeer is uh, a little bit more now, is basically what I'm trying to say. There's more understeer than what they used to be, which can be a bit frustrating. Um, the brakes didn't feel as good, but it does feel like you can trail brake a lot more and for longer, if that makes sense. So you can, like go like half brake pressure through I just went half brake pressure through that um, that hairpin and was absolutely fine got a little bit of um, vibration feedback just as a warning but it seems like um, it's easier to trail brake um, so you're not going to lose the front end as much as you were before the rear still steps out but it seems like it's oh messed that up um, it seems like it's less snappy if that makes sense i mean you can hold a slide for longer but it feels like it's it's a lot more controllable um but the other thing that i have found in relation to tires yes they have fixed the tire temperatures but what we're going to do is experiment in a second and do an actual race because to me it feels like even when you're down to like single finger percentage of the rear tire wear it still feels like you've got a ton of grip. Like the, the tyre's not wearing properly now. So um, that's something we'll look at in a second. Um, what else is there? You know, that we'll talk about the AI in a second as well. Um, yeah, let's talk about the off-track help. So as you saw in the menus, it's off. And you've got a lot more grip out Apart from going over a massive bump like that and sending you over your rider flying. But there's loads of grip out in the dirt. Bearing in mind I've got traction control off as well. Um, off track help is off. Yeah, of course, if you do something like that and just spin up the rear. But you've got loads of grip out, out on the dirty stuff, which you shouldn't have. Like on the grass, you've almost got as much grip as you do on the track. So you haven't got to worry about slowing down or anything. And to me, that is a big problem, especially when it comes to online racing. As you've seen in one of my recent videos, 
someone who was using off-track help was just com completely cutting big chunks of the circuit. Um, so even with it turned off, you're still going to be able to do that. Obviously, you're still going to incur penalties. But it just doesn't... You know, it begs the question, why? Off-track. If you're off-track... Well, A, you shouldn't be out there. B, you know, there shouldn't be much grip at all. Especially in the wet. And C, you know, really, you're gonna, you should have to slow down. Otherwise, you're going to realistically spin up the rear. Or you're just going to end up crashing. But it doesn't seem to be um, a problem for some reason. They, they've kind of gone backwards in terms of the off-track stuff. Whereas before, again, like before it wasn't, you know, a, a given that you were going to crash if you hit the grass or anything. And you could literally touch the grass with your front wheel and you, you'd be fine. Um, but it was a little bit less forgiving. And now it's a bit too, too forgiving, in my opinion. So you can literally take liberties with going off track and not having to worry too much about crashing so that's pretty much you know as much as i've got to say in time trial we'll just finish this lap because i'm on a personal best at the moment but yeah this bike it definitely feels a little bit different to what it did but like i said the the physics themselves feel like they have been simplified and you know before it was a simcade it's gone more towards the arcade style of physics rather than like almost slap bang in the middle with Simcade. Um, I'd prefer them to go the other way and just go to simulation, but I know that people don't like that. I know they've had to make the game easier for people who have been struggling with it. Um, so let's just, let's back out now and let's go and uh, do a race. We'll use the same bike. We'll, we'll do the same track. Um... The AI around here are bad anyway, uh, before the patch, so uh, yeah, that's fine. We don't want 18 laps, we want, we'll do 5 laps, number of opponents, that's fine, 120%, tyre wear is on, um, let's start. So I'm going to go with soft tyres because I just want to kind of show you what I mean when the rear tyre wears out. Um, and you've still got a ton of grip. So, we'll select the tyres for soft. Whether well, then that will keep as it is. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, in terms of career mode, they have um, lowered some of the, uh, the things you have to do in order to progress. In fact, what I'm going to do, I know I do this in my videos at the moment anyway. We're just going to slow down a bit. Just spin up the rear, get it nice and hot. And do a backflip, just for good measure. Right. So let's go. See if we can catch them. I may have given myself a little bit too much, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, so they've made some of the career objectives easier in terms of unlocking certain uh, events and that. Um, I know that they changed some of the time trials as well to make them a bit easier. But I don't get why, with the time trials and that, why don't they scale the actual lap times to the difficulty people are playing on? Because if someone's playing on, say, 50%, 50% difficulty, um, yet yeah, all the time trials, the, the gold time is exactly the same regardless of whether you're playing on easy, medium, hard, extreme. Whereas really, they should scale the times so that if you're playing on easy, your time's easier to the gold time is easier to beat. If you're playing on extreme, it's harder to get gold. That's personally how I think they should have done it, is just scaled it to the actual difficulty you're playing on so that you're not really alienating people that can't hit those gold times to pass certain objectives, especially when it came to the um, the license times trials. Some of them, I know a lot of people struggled with some of them, and again, it's just a case of just scale them. Just scale them to the difficulty, and then people won't be having trouble 
you know, get to this section of the game that they want to get to, or the unlock the bikes that they want to, to use. So I think, you know, in the future, if they do a ride five, which, you know, they probably will, if they go down the similar route for career mode again, I think that's the way they realistically should go. Because that way, you know, people who, who were coming into the game first time, never played a bike game before, at least they're still going to have fun with it and not get frustrated, which I know a lot of people have been getting frustrated with Ride 4 because they haven't been able to do the time trials. And that sucks, especially if you're on the regionals and you can't, you know, do some of the time trials on that or you can't, you know, you, you want to go into the, the World League but you can't because you can't do the time trial to unlock the license. There's a lot that they can do in terms of difficulty. Um, like I said before, I'm playing on 120% difficulty right now. I know that AI around here have always been pretty weak, but the AI since the new update are even slower in my opinion. Um, there has been maybe one race, two races where they've been competitive, but other than that, they are an absolute cakewalk and you know it really does um kind of suck the fun out of it because i'm having to give them a head start just so that i've got something to do rather than just turning all my races into time trials where i'm just racing by myself because i passed them all so really 120 percent needs to be more difficult um i've personally found them way too easy from the get-go on this game 120 percent is not difficulty enough um, now they don't need to put the percentage up even more up to like 150 percent they just need to make sure that 120 percent is a challenge and unfortunately at the moment it's not it's uh, a piece of cake and the ai is slow on the straights they're not as dumb as they were before, I have to admit, since the update, they're a bit smarter. They don't crash as much as they used to, they still do crash. They still sit up a bit too much if you get close to them, they still shut off the throttle if you get too close to them, which really is quite a frustrating thing. Like there, there we go, we just went close to that guy, he shut off the throttle. They don't need to be doing that, because there's no reason for them to come off the throttle. I know it's obviously to try and avoid a collision with the player, but we wouldn't have collided anyway. But yeah, they have stopped crashing as much as they did before, um, especially around Suzuka. They uh, used to crash a hell of a lot around there, but they seem to be absolutely fine now. Um, I have had instances where they do still crash, they've still got a little bit of a human element, and that's fine. I don't mind that at all. You don't want them to be on rails. You don't want them just going around in a snake the whole time, not really doing anything apart from stuck to the ground. But yeah, talking about tyre wear, let's look at the tyres. So, my front tyre is red hot. 36% of that, or 35% of that is remaining now. 10% left of my rear tyre, which again is pretty warm. But my rear tyre feels absolutely fine. It feels like what it did on lap one. So yes, they fixed the tyre temperatures, but it seems to have messed up the, the actual grip of the tyres to where you've almost got unlimited grip in front and rear. So it's, uh, yeah, again, something that's going to have to be addressed. I just think they maybe need to test their patches a little bit more. I know they try to get them out to get, you know, be in line with the, the new DLCs and stuff. But, um, yeah, I think maybe just a little bit more time testing them would be good. Because, obviously, something has definitely gone wrong in terms of the AI. I know some people found them a bit too aggressive sometimes, you know, taking the player out and stuff, which I've had myself. Um... But I don't think they're as bad as uh, what they have been in previous games where they just didn't really know you were there and would just go ride straight through you. Um, but yeah, I think they're a bit too timid now. So 
Oh, nearly off track. So yeah, they need to be faster. They need to stop coming off the throttle when you get too close to them. You know, I gave them, what, a 12 second head start in this race. And we're now leading by 2.7 seconds. So something is seriously wrong. The last thing I want to do after this race is go to Suzuka with this bike and test out turn 15. Because when I went around there with the uh, Daytona Moto2 765, no issues with the front end through turn 15. So I just want to double check it with this bike, a super bike, and see um, if the front end is fine through turn 15. Because if it is, then at least that's one positive that's come out of the um, the update in that they may have fixed that corner. So we'll just finish this race, which we're now leading by over four seconds. And to be honest, I haven't really ridden that great. But again, I've got 1% of grip left of the rear tyre, so it's going to go down to zero before we actually finish this race. And it's fine. Zero percent now. And I've got loads of grip left in it. No issues whatsoever. You know, the, yeah, the grip's gone a little bit. But nowhere near as much as it should have been. It just feels too grippy. So, um, yeah, they've definitely messed up the tyre the wear itself. Okay. Final thing. Let's go and uh, check out Suzuka. Just do a time trial. Um, let's go. There it is. Let's go with GP circuit. I just want to test out turn 15 to see what the uh, what the front end is like. Because usually with turn 15, it would literally just wash out without any warning. Um, I'm not going to change the tires. I'll keep them on medium, medium. And see how we go. I will try to go through turn 15, which is this corner we've just gone through. Even the autopilot used to crash there sometimes. Oh, I've messed that up. That's fine. That's fine. We'll just skip all this bit. We're not here to set a time. I just want to test out turn 15. Yeah, I, I, I just want to see how quick I can go through it. And if the uh, front end is actually going to be stable enough. So yeah, this is the... You know, I, I like this track. But when it comes to turn 15... It's uh, sometimes a bit of a lottery through there. So... You know, sometimes you can have unpredictable races around here. The AI used to crash around these corners, which wasn't great. They used to crash going through here because they used to go a bit too quick and just lose the rear. Oh, there's me, just lost the rear. <laughs> okay. I've crashed into this corner before, losing the front. Okay. Right, up to the hairpin. But yeah, I would prefer if Milestone reverted back to the physics we had before the update. Um, because they were fine. They were absolutely fine. I know some people would have difficulty with them, but, you know, it's not meant to be easy. Okay. Right. Turn 15 is next. The 765 was absolutely fine through here. What is the V4 like? So. It's fine. It's fine. It looks like they've actually sorted out. Turn 15. There was no vibration at all. Which, uh... You know, you usually get just to say that, you know, the front end's going in a second. It seemed absolutely fine. I will do one more. I might just uh, edit and uh, cut to me going through turn 15 so that you ain't got to watch me do basically another whole lap around here. Right, so coming up to turn 15 again. 
I'm going to try and go through here in fifth gear this time. Again, absolutely fine. No vibration at all. 10.15 has been fixed. And I have missed that corner again. So yeah, just to recap really. So the physics have been simplified it seems. Off track. Doesn't matter if you got off track help turned off. You got tons of grip out there unless you go deep into the uh, into the gravel. Um, understeer, there's a little bit more understeer than there was before. Uh, tire wet seems to be non-existent. Um, the tire temperatures have been fixed, but tire wear seems to, you know, as you saw when I had zero percent left of my rear tire, it was still gripping absolutely fine. Um, you can still get slides in that, like I said, but it seems like you, the limit seems to be like it's been numbed a bit. You can still get the, the bike to move around if you know what you're doing. Um, oh, nearly saved that. So yeah, you can still get the bike to move around a lot in that and make it look like you're riding ragged and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just a little bit disappointing and I hope that they do, in fact, revert back to what they were before. But we can just wait and hope and uh, we won't find out until we get the next update, which will probably be when the next paid DLC comes out. So that's pretty much it from me, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content for, and I shall see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe and to wash your hands. See you!